very good morning and welcome. First of all, indeed, uh, great to see you all this morning, and uh, particularly more welcome to those of you who are here for the first time or who are visitors. Good to see you all. I was rather hoping that we might be able to sing at this point, and um, um, as you um, as you will probably know from the press and from my um, and from my newsletter, that um, it looked like we would be able to sing. Uh, unfortunately, because of the way that, um, um, that the parameters work, uh, we need to, Wrexham needs to be below 50 uh, cases in 100,000. Unfortunately, we've gone from 36 last week to 54 this week, so our cases are actually moving in the wrong direction. Um, every week we will make a decision about whether we are going to be able to sing, so uh, I'm hoping that at least in two weeks' time, uh, we will actually be able to sing at the 11 o'clock. Uh, so, with apologies, we have a said service this morning. And so we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in the power of the grace. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and acknowledged to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Please sit on you as we Heavenly Father, yes. we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and to fail to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, and give us all that is past, and lead us in his way to all that is good in our heart. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the Gloria in Excellence. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hi, for the fourth Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that we, with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You sit down and read it, please. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, and he does not delight in the death of the living, for he created all things that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no destructive poison in them, and the dominion of Hades is not on earth, for righteousness is immortal. For God created us for incorruption, and made us in the image of his own eternity. But through the devil's envy, death entered the world, and those who belong to his company experience it. <coughs> This is the word of the Lord. So 
So Psalm 30, we say all ten verses. I will exhort you, O Lord, because you have raised me, and have let my foes triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you healed me. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his, give praise to his holy name, for his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime, heaviness, heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. My and you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry. To the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in my life, and I will go into the pit? Will the dust praise you, or do you fail before the Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my help. You have turned my Lord in jealousy. You have put our voice out, and gave the new divinities. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, I God. And reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this manner I am giving my advice. It is pro appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your needs. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be a relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may not be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance, as it is written. The one who had did not have too much, the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So can I invite you to stand for the gospel? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boats to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and, when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be made well and live. So he went to him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, 
fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came to the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble us with any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kuf, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement, and he strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Christ. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. and academics love disputing about things. In fact, disagreeing is one of the things that keeps the university and research sector alive, because if everyone agreed on anything, on everything, there would be no progress at all. So take, for example, um, something from the world of politics. A couple of weeks ago, the uh, Northern Irish Democratic Unionists elected as their leader someone who was a young earther. Just to explain, uh, this is somebody who believes that the world was in fact created in 4004 BC. Although I'm not even sure that uh, he went as far as Archbishop Usher of Armagh, who said something like it was 4004 BC. I think it was the 29th of October and about 9.30 in the morning, uh, being of course the time that a gentleman sits down to begin his morning's work. Now, for the 17th century, when Usher was writing, this was reasonable, if not uh, a progressive thing to write. From the point of view of 2021, it's not something that most people would agree on. I leave it to wiser heads than mine to ponder uh, just how a 21st century political party can elect a young earther as its leader, if only momentarily, and just comment that if we all actually still agreed on this, if we all actually still agreed uh, that the world was created in 4004 BC, then the world would be a very different place indeed. Not just the way that we perceive the world, but in terms of uh, science and research. There would be no science of geology, for example. Um, so uh, things like uh, oil reserves would be uh, uh, much less easy to find. Uh, probably no cosmology either. If everything was created in 4004, well, why bother studying it? Physics wouldn't be quite the same as it is today. And if you went to a natural history museum and saw all those uh, fossils of um, these things called dinosaurs, there would be embarrassing little labels um, around each of them explaining, uh, well, why they were not quite as old as you thought they might be. Now, if it's true that uh, um, disagreeing with people moving things forward in geology, it also changes things in theology as well. So we move forward sometimes to finding a new consensus on a range of issues. In fact, there are very few things that all theologians would agree on, except possibly a couple of things, like this idea that St Mark's Gospel, part of which we've just heard as our Gospel reading, was almost certainly the first to be written down. It has to be said, there are some outliers who reckon that was John, but uh, that's another matter entirely. So most of them would also agree, as well as the fact that it was uh, written first, that it's based on an eyewitness account that gives it a freshness and immediacy that uh, the other Gospels don't quite have. And you can see this in the story that we've heard this morning, or at least the two stories that 
we've heard this morning. Some people have pointed out that both stories are sandwiched together, uh, the raising of the Jairus' daughter and the healing of the woman with a hemorrhage, and maybe they would work just as well, if not better, if they were told separately. But the fact that they are not told separately would suggest that uh, the eyewitness who relayed these stories, and uh, may even be the Apostle Peter himself, uh, when he told these stories to the early Christian community, always told them in this way. Jesus was coming out of the boat, he was met by Jairus, and then this woman came up to him in the crowd, and then we got to Jairus' house. That might also explain why uh, that intimate scene in Jairus' house is told quite as vividly as well. But the fact that remains that they are both absolutely amazing stories in their own right that uh, um, teach us a huge amount about Jesus and about what he did in his own day. But sometimes I think that uh, what we need to do when we look at these stories is to think about how they might affect us personally. As most of you know, for most of my ministry, I've been involved in teaching and lecturing. One of the things that um, I often do with my students was to ask them to make a list of things, um, attributes about themselves, which might affect the way they read the Bible, by which I meant interpret for themselves. And over the years, I had to be um, uh, careful about how I phrased this question after somebody pointed out that as she was getting older, uh, she couldn't read the typeface as well, so she needed, uh, um, you know, sort of larger print. Not at all what I meant. What is it about you, yourself, that you bring to your reading, your interpretation of the Bible, that might affect it, that other people might not have? So, um, the results were always interesting, uh, and I never actually asked them to read out their list. Um, I said, you know, actually these are private things that you think might affect your reading. Um, but then I would uh, um, ask them about the things that I thought that they might have written down, which would affect the, the way they read the Bible. Are you a Christian? I'd ask. And they'd look at me blankly. Nobody ever wrote down uh, that they were a Christian. Well, I, I, if you're not a Christian, you're reading the Bible, and you're going to read it in a different way from if you are a committed Christian. And uh, as most of these people would train for the ministry, you would rather hope that they were. You can't take every, anything for granted these days. Are you a man or a woman? Are you a parent? Are you disabled? And so on. And uh, I'd ask them all these questions. Once they worked out what it was that would make a difference to, way, to the way that they would interpret the Bibles, Bible, I would get them to read these stories and ask them which ones spoke to them most deeply and how they were affected by these stories given all these things about themselves. The results, I have to say, were always deeply moving. Sometimes people who had suffered from long-term illnesses identified with the woman with a hemorrhage, desperately seeking for a cure. Or people who felt that they had been on the outside felt that uh, Jesus had broken down barriers and they now had access. They might see in her a loved one, or might see in her a search for the Jesus that they themselves might be struggling with. I want to touch him, said one of them, but I can never seem to get close enough. Um, or another one admitted to being afraid to get too close to Jesus, uh, just in case he turned and he saw her and saw what she was really like. Sometimes I've shared this idea with clergy, um, who have occasionally said that they have that, fe that feeling of being drained, a bit like Jesus himself, and even in my own ministry, I have occasionally felt this idea of power coming out of me, particularly when I've been involved in the healing ministry or the deliverance ministry. I've also seen so many times the desperation of people looking for a solution or an answer to the troubles that they have, whether physical or spiritual. And maybe they are reflected in that woman in the crowd. And then there is that story of Jairus' daughter. As a parent, for me, this is one of the most visceral of all stories, at least to start off with. And we can all put ourselves in the place of Jairus, whose daughter is about to die, especially when we have been present if a loved one has been very sick indeed. 
Again, with my students over the years, there have been several of them who have lost children or babies, and have spoken very movingly of the way in which this story has affected them. But what people commented on most of all in this story is the way that Jesus responds, the way that Jesus responds to Jairus and comes to him in his hour of need. But many have also pointed out the sheer tenderness of that intimate scene when his daughter is raised to life. The way that the circus is shut down, they're laughing at him, he puts them out of the house. The way that he takes only a few people uh, with him, the manner in which Jesus speaks to her. And I will always have pointed out that um, the phrase little girl get up isn't actually little girl get up, but little lamb get up. And then the sheer practicality of Jesus telling her parents to give her something to eat. Maybe it's at this point that you feel that you are actually listening to an eyewitness account of somebody who was actually there. But of course, as well as that eyewitness quality that they have of Jesus' ministry in Galilee, these stories are also trying to teach us a little bit about Jesus himself. This is, as I said, a Jesus who breaks down barriers, who responds to human need, both in his going with Jairus and in his dealing with the woman. In both cases, it is a brave, radical faith and trust in him that he is responding to, whether in public or whether deeply private. As well as that, Mark shows us that Jesus is one who has the power to raise even the dead and points us directly in the uh, direction of trust in him as the Son of God. Only God has this power. And it may be worth remembering as we encounter this story um, that it comes immediately after Mark's account of the carving of the storm. Who is this, say the disciples, that even the winds and the waves obey him? And it's almost as if Mark is saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. But for us today, we read these stories still to understand Jesus and what he still needs means to us, for he is now as he was then. These are amazing stories and they affect people very deeply. So if you have a chance this week, have a look at them again, these stories in St Mark's Gospel, and see how they speak to you today. You may want to do it more than once and uh, maybe the following day they may speak to you in a different way. But remember, most of all, that central message that whatever happens to you, Jesus is always with you, that he always responds, that he is with you where you are, and that with him there is always life and hope and resurrection. Amen. So we stand and proclaim our faith in Jesus, the Son of God, in the words of the Nicene. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten of the Trinity, of one being with the Father, to remain all things created, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and lay down. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see the Lord our friends. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is 
Bless your church with the humility that was in Christ. Following him in poverty of spirit and loneliness of heart, may your people have grace to share the riches that he brought to fallen humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Move with your spirit the wills of those who control the resources of the world that there may be a more just distribution of the good things which you have created. Bring relief to those who suffer want and lack even the necessities of life. Lord, in your mercy, give us grace to share the burdens of our friends and neighbours. Guide us to listen and respond to those who call to us for help. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. have compassion on all who suffer with long and wasting diseases. Give skill to doctors and nurses and patience to all who care for individuals. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. We pray for those who are dying in childhood. Raise them up to complete and perfect life, comforting all who mourn for their little ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our worldwide calendar of prayer today, we pray for the Church of Pakistan and continue this month to pray for the Mole Mission area. For Carol Goulman, their mission area leader. Praying for Archdeacon John, Archdeacon of Wrexham, and for Gregory, our bishop. As we also pray and remember that there was nine who were ordained priests yesterday in our diocese. For George Bearwood, Lou Bristow, Helen Dawson, Toby Jones, Gregor Lachlan Mortel, Joe McCreel, Ben Lyons, Jim Thompson, and Gail Woodward. And for those who will be ordained deacon next Saturday in our diocese. We continue to pray for those who develop, produce, and roll out the vaccine. For Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes. For Daniel and all those in prison. And for their families. For Jane and the chaplaincy team at the Mile Hospital, and Alan at HMP Bowen. We remember before God all those known to us at this time were in need of our prayers. Those who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have nobody to pray for them. We remember Richard, Louise, Derek, Malcolm, Gordon, James. Anne, Nancy, Harry, Dot, Chris, Peter, Joshua, Jean, and Janet. We pray for those who find themselves bereaved at this time. Remembering Margaret Davies' family, Elwyn Jones and family, Sue Hill and family, Mike and family. For our loved ones departed, remembering Margaret Davis, Gwen Jones, Tim Hill, Emma, and Jenny Van Eaton. Lord, in your mercy, we pray 
in the name of Christ, by whom we are raised to new life, as we pray together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. So can I invite you to stand with me, please? Christ, the Prince of Peace, brings down the walls that divide us. God has called us to live in peace. Time never to around the world, but we both answer. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us offer one another a socially distant sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through to the vine and birth of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks, Holy Father, for powerful and ever living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great high priest who has freed us from our sins and made us a royal priesthood, serving you, our God and Father, and so with the hosts of angels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, for the Sabbath in the highest. All praise and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your Son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved, and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your spirit this bread and wine your gifts to us, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. 
For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. As he hath commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son, proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection, and waiting for him to come in glory. We bring to you this bread, this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise, restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly blessing, and at the last receive us with all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Looking for the coming of the kingdom, we say in the language of our hearts, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us, and we do not have salvation, but deliver us from evil. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Where we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us all peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. We come now to receive communion. Could I, I invite those of you um, who are here in church to uh, uh, follow the uh, follow the directions and to maintain social distancing as uh, we come to communion? Uh, for those of you who are joining us online, please join us in an act of spiritual communion.
thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. We say together, generous God, we have fed us at your heavenly table. Kindle us with the fire of your spirit, that when the Lord comes again, we may shine as light before him, who is alive and reigns in glory forever. Amen. And the mission prayer, God, you call us all to serve you in the world. Give us the grace to be visible and active in your service, to build your kingdom here on earth, that all people may come to know your boundless love, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So, just before our final uh, blessing and dismissal, a few notices. Um, apologies uh, for next week for the 11 o'clock. Uh, it's the uh, civic service who have realised that, uh, that they would actually need pretty much all the seats that we've got. So the Eucharist will be celebrated next week at half past nine with the, uh, with the all age worship service and uh, also in Welsh um, at, um, at six o'clock in the evening. So uh, uh, please do uh, try to avoid the 11 o'clock if you can and uh, come to one of the uh, other services and pray for uh, the new mayor as, um, as he comes to his. Uh, civic service. Um, also this week, of course, um, we have uh, Tim Hill's funeral. We continue to um, extend our sympathies to Sue and the family. Um, if you uh, would like to participate in the funeral uh, from at home, please, um, and you haven't um, had one of my emails, uh, please ask and there's a, there is a link on that. Uh, and similarly with Margaret's funeral on Wednesday, there is also a link on that, so um, if you'd like to uh, participate in that from, uh, from at home, please do follow the link and ask me and uh, I'll try and point you in the right direction. Thanks to everyone who uh, came yesterday for the coffee morning. I have utterly and totally completely forgotten how much we raised. £456. So uh, thank you to everyone who was involved in that. I think you, you know, round of applause or round of the. Um... <laughs> but the uh, raffle prize winners, I believe, are in church. Congratulations to Irving for winning the gin um, as the first prize. That's one most people have their eye on actually Irving, so well done. <laughs> and uh, and also to uh, Maureen who uh, won the second prize and. Uh, um, third prize, I can't remember. Anyway, there was a third prize. Somebody collected it yesterday. Um, but um, yeah, um, thank you to everyone. Sorry? Ian the Bell Ring. Ian Maycock, the, uh, the uh, town captain. So that's, uh, um, you know, yeah, that's really good too. Um, are there any birthdays? Um, Jan Hardcastle managed to get away with. Uh, um, um, with uh, I'm not admitting that it was her birthday on Tuesday, she's not here at the moment, she was at the half past nine, so uh, many happy returns to her. Anybody else? Birthdays? Wedding anniversaries? Gosh. I'm sure there must be some out there, but uh, um, many happy returns. If it is your birthday and you are sitting on your hands, could I invite you now to stand, please? Lord be with you. Lord be with you. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may be filled with hope. A benedict you, or Lethiok, a tart, a mad, a rasmid glad, a vol, a night leaf, like a jigo galafui, and wastad. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.